O Lord, our Heavenly Father, source of light, truth, and goodness, on this Christmas Eve, transform this time of decision into a season of vision and inspiration. Continue to show our lawmakers your mercy as you shed light on their thoughts and offer them your salvation. And with that prayer, Senate Chaplain Dr. Barry Black opened the U.S. Senate on December 24, 2009, Christmas Eve. Wait, hold on a second. Stop the podcast. Christmas Eve? In 2009, the Senate met on Christmas Eve? Why? We find out after this. As we approach the end of each year, it seems like members of both chambers of Congress fret that they won't meet looming deadlines for key votes and will have to be in session on Christmas or New Year's. Typically, they end up getting their work done in time and don't have to meet on or right before the winter holidays, like in 2021. One big exception, though, 2009. That's when the Senate went down to the wire considering a huge health care overhaul bill, the Affordable Care Act, now known by both sides as Obamacare. The most obvious problem with the bill before us is it doesn't do what it was supposed to do. The one test for any bill was whether it would lower cost. This bill fails that test. It's also clear that even many of the people on this side who are going to support this bill don't like it. Otherwise, Democratic leaders wouldn't have had such a tough time rounding up the votes. Otherwise, Democratic leaders would not have had to have votes in the middle of the night or at the crack of dawn or over the weekend or even during a blizzard. Otherwise, they wouldn't be rushing it through Congress on Christmas Eve. The first time this body has had a vote on the day before Christmas in more than a century. Democratic Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, advocating the bill, responded. Now, Mr. President, everyone knows we've had votes in the middle of the night and on Christmas Eve because the Republicans wouldn't allow us to have votes at any other hour. Now, it's true, when we go home, we're going to hear an earful. I'm going to hear an earful, I bet, from young Caleb, uh, a boy, Mr. President, who was born with legs that stopped here, right above his knees, who's needed a set of prosthetic, new prosthetic devices because the rest of his body's growing. But the insurance company says no because he had a pre-existing disability. I'll get an earful from Caleb, and especially his parents, an earful of joy and happiness. Because you see, Mr. President, from this day forward, insurance companies will not be able to deny coverage because of pre-existing disability. People like Caleb and parents who have children with diabetes and other problems, it's over with. So yes, we will hear an earful, but it's gonna be earful of wonderment and happiness that people waited for for a long time. There were only two floor speakers that day before the vote. Democratic leader Reid and Republican leader McConnell. Not that the rest of the Senate hadn't had a chance to speak. On that day before December 25th, it was the 25th straight day of debate on the health care legislation. And even though the day is called Christmas Eve, they gaveled in at 645 in the morning. Because of the historic nature of the vote to reinvent America's health care system, presiding over the Senate that Christmas Eve morning was then Vice President and now President Joe Biden. He was there more for symbolism. With a solid Democratic majority in the Senate, Joe Biden wasn't needed to break any ties. Here's Senate President Joe Biden calling the vote at 7.04 a.m. The question is on the passage of H.R. 3590, which is amended, is the uh, Patent Protection and Affordable Care Act. There is a sufficient second. There appears to be. There is. The eight. The nays are ordered. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Akaka. Aye. Mr. Akaka. Aye. Mr. Alexander. No. Mr. Alexander. No. Mr. Barrasso. No. 
Mr. Barrasso, no. Mr. Baucus. Aye. Mr. Baucus, aye. Senators voted from their desks, reflecting the importance of the legislation. Senator Robert Byrd, a Democrat from West Virginia and then 92 years old, deviated from protocol by adding an editorial comment to his vote. It's tough to hear, but Senator Byrd says, This is for my friend Ted Kennedy, I. Democratic Senator Kennedy of Massachusetts, a longtime champion of universal health care, died earlier that year of brain cancer. Mr. Byrd. Mr. Byrd, aye. Joe Biden announced the vote result at 7.15 a.m. Any other senators wishing to vote or to change their vote? The yeas are 60, the nays are 39, H.R. 3590 as amended, the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act is passed. <laughs> the gallery would refrain from... The vote. 60 yes, 39 no, a party line vote. It was the first time the Senate had gathered for a vote on Christmas Eve since 1895, according to the New York Times. After a few speeches following the vote, the Senate gaveled out at 1019 in the morning. It wasn't the final word from Congress on this matter, however. The health care bill then went to the House, which voted for it a few months later on March 21st, 2010. The Affordable Care Act was signed into law by President Barack Obama on March 23, 2010, which leads to this episode's bonus clip. At the beginning of that Christmas Eve Senate session in 2009, Majority Leader Harry Reid noted Joe Biden was in the chamber. Uh, Mr. President, we're happy to see the Vice President of the United States here in his capacity as President of the United States Senate. For 36 years, you've graced these halls with your brilliance and... Uh, I think it's fair to say that we miss you very much, but we're glad that you are where you are. Of course, at the White House ceremony where the Affordable Care Act was signed into law, Vice President Biden famously told President Obama what a big deal it was by employing legendary profanity. We'll save that salty adjective for another podcast when we're not talking about Christmas Eve. That's it for this episode of C-SPAN's The Weekly. A reminder that you could do your own searches in the C-SPAN video library for important big votes in Congress on health care or any other legislation, whether they're voting on holidays or not. Just go to cspan.org and use the search bar on top. It's free and it's open on Christmas. Thanks for listening and happy searching.